It's time for another GIMP tutorial. The GIMP is good. We like the GIMP, don't we? All right, so in this episode, I am going to show you the easiest way that I have found to remove a background from an image. And I have tried several methods to remove a background from an image. So I think you guys will like this one. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy and it's pretty quick. In the show notes, there is a link to the image that I'm going to be using in this tutorial. So if you guys want to download that so that you could follow along in the tutorial, it's there for you if you want to use it. All right, so I have GIMP opened up. I have my tutorial image loaded. This is Lily from, from um, AT&T, the AT&T commercials. All right, so what we want to do first is we want to make sure that our image has an alpha channel. And if it doesn't, we're going to add an alpha channel. An alpha channel is a transparent layer or, or um, I don't know if I would call it a layer. It's a, it's, a, it's a transparent component of an image so that when you erase something on the image, it'll be transparent behind it. So it puts, it, it puts the transparent layer behind all the visible part of the image that you see. So what we're wanting to do is remove our background and have it um, have that background transparent once we remove it. So, you know, we can superimpose her over a different background. All right. So let's go to right. Cl you can right click on the picture to get your menu and then go to um, layer and then go down to where it says transparency and then select alpha channel. Okay, so this image did not have an alpha channel, so we need to add one. All right, the tool that we're going to be using to remove her from the, from the background of the image is we're going to be using the free select tool. If you see these tools up here that have the little white triangle in the lower right hand corner, if you left click and hold your mouse button, your left mouse button, you will see the other options that are available for each one of these tools. So that little triangle shows you that there are additional options for these tools. So we want to select free select. Your starting point with your free select is also going to be your ending point. So keep that in mind when you decide where you want to start. Now I'm going to start down here at the very bottom of the image. And one thing I want to do to make it easier to, to, um, cut the background out of the image without having any reflections or anything on the subject is I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to use my mouse wheel to zoom in. And then if you hold down your middle mouse button, your mouse wheel, use it as a button, hold it down, you'll be able to pan the image and you'll be able to do this also while you're using your free select tool. So, okay, so I'm going to start down here at the very bottom. And you see that the when you when you zoom in on it, you see that the outer edge is a little bit fuzzy. You know, it's anti-aliased. Well, I found the best way to do this is to go just inside that fuzzy area on the um, outline of Lily here on that blue sleeve. So I'm going to make my first click there. And then I'm going to move my mouse up and then I'm going to, I'm basically it's like uh, connect the dots. So if you just keep doing this, go inside that little fuzzy area so that you're just, you know, so you're, you're, you're cutting it out right there where the blue area is solid, not where it's fuzzy. And then if you make a mistake, you, you need to move, you need to move one of these points that you just made. If you just hover your mouse over it, when it turns yellow like that, Hold down your left mouse button and you can actually move that point. All right, I'm going to move it back. But just so you know, if you make a mistake, just stop, hover over it, and then you can move it, you know, wherever you need it before you go on. All right, so now I'm going to go back up. The more points that you create, okay, the smoother it's going to be, you know, as far as, you know, where there's curves and stuff. Okay, so now... I need to pan my image so I can go on. So I'm just going to hold down the center mouse button. I'm going to pull it down and then I'm going to go on and left click my 
my points here. Now I'm going to do this a little more quickly than I would normally do it since I'm doing a tutorial here. But I want to show you guys, even if I do it quickly like this and not put in as many points as I would normally put in, it's actually a pretty fast process and it actually works pretty well. Now what I'll do is, you know, when you have transitions where you have a little curve, I'll put in some additional points to follow that curve, like right here. And you see we're coming up on our hair now. I'm going to pan it again. I'm going to say just inside that dark line of her hair. And I'm going to add more points as I go around that curve to make it smoother when we cut the background out. Also, she has a lot of stray hairs. You won't see those until you really zoom in on it. We're going to ignore those. Because I say when you look at it, when you look at the image normally, you won't even notice them. Okay, so now we're right along the side of her eye there. We want to make sure that we get her skin tone. And then I'm going to come up, add a few more points to make this transition here. Where, you know, where she's got her hair tied on the side of her head. It kind of has that little curvy bump to it. So I'm adding a lot more points so that I can follow those contours. Okay, now I need to pan it again. I know what you guys are saying right now. You're, you're saying, oh, you said that was quick. Well, it really is. If I wasn't, if I wasn't explaining it as I go along, it would be a lot faster. But I want to make sure I explain everything as I go along. If you guys practice this and just do it a couple times, you'll get you'll get better and you'll get faster every time you do it, believe me. And you can see that I'm bypassing some of those little straight hairs she's got up there in the top. Where there's a lot of reflection on those stray hairs, we don't want those. That's just going to cause problems. Okay, a few more points to follow the contour here. You, you see more of the stray hairs, right? Yeah, we don't want those. Okay, got to pan it again. Now, if you want to be extremely detailed, you can always grab those if you want. But the only one that I'm going to grab, this is one the real thick one down there that you will see even when you zoom out of it. So I'm grabbing this, this one here, and then I'm going to go back up. And then I'm going to come back down. So I'm grabbing that one. And then I'm going to grab this one here. Just because it's so thick. And I'm just going to take it to a point there. And then come back up. And then follow the main contour again of her hair. Alright, so now we're getting her shirt. I'm going to pan it again. Oh, we're getting close now, aren't we? We're getting closer. Oh, so close. Pan. Take it all the way to the bottom. I'm going to hold my control key and I'm going to zoom out. And then I'm going to pan it down. And then I'm going to connect it to the very first point that I created. Okay, so now we have that entire outline selected. Let me bring the image back in closer again. Okay, so we've got that. We've got her selected. But what we want to do is we want to select the background. So I'm going to go up here where it says select. And I'm going to select invert. Now watch what happens when I do that. Now you can see that there's the, what we call marching ants. 
You see all those little marching ants uh, around the complete outline, the entire frame of the picture, and then around her. So now I know that the background is selected. So now what I want to do is I'm going to use Control X. And what Control X is going to do, it's going to cut that selection. And what I should have underneath is going to be transparency. So there we go. Now I'll go up here and unselect everything. I'm done with the selection. So select none. Now, didn't that turn out pretty good? I think that turned out awesome. Now, no, if you want it to be perfect, no matter what method you use to remove the background from an image, you're still going to have some areas that you're going to need to clean up a little bit. Like um, in the area over here where she's got strands of hair that are open where you could see the reflections in the background. Up here at the very crown of her head, you can see where that had some reflection. So we can go in and we can clean that up. And she's got a couple of blemishes on her face. I guess the makeup person was off that day. I don't know. But um, in the next episode, we'll take our finished image here right, right now from removing the background. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it in um, Inkscape's native format, XCF. So I'm going to save that. And then in the next tutorial, we'll put a solid background behind her so that we can see any areas that need to be touched up. We'll go through it. We'll, we'll touch up any areas that we need to touch up. So I'll show you how to do that. And then we will have this project complete. Okay, so this is a wrap. This is a wrap on this tutorial. We will continue it, you know, in the next tutorial. But um, that's enough. Uh, that is enough to cover for you guys today. So remember, you can create freely. And I will see you next time.